Hello, uh, my name is Grant and I'm a lead pastor at New Song Church. Really wonderful to uh, be with you again uh, this week. And I uh, just want to share with you a few things about uh, what to expect over the next hour or so. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome any guests who are with us. If you have not uh, connected with us before, just a warm welcome to you. Uh, we sincerely hope that uh, this experience with us would be encouraging uh, and illuminating for you as you try and find your way in this world. Uh, it's a world uh, we believe uh, God is fully present and there's every opportunity for us to connect with him and with one, one another. Uh, we have uh, an online connect card. We'd love to uh, know who you are. So if you could fill that in and let us know you, you were here, we would really appreciate it so that we can actually have an ongoing journey with you and just see where God leads us together. Uh, over the next hour or so, we're going to hear from uh, Melody Anderson, one of our associate pastors, who's bringing us the next in our series in First Peter. Really excited to hear where Peter's taking us next and where Melody is going to, to lead us and share with us there. Uh, please uh, consider joining us uh, after the service. If you're watching this on Sunday morning, we have what we call the lobby. And it's just a chance to kind of ex exercise hospitality to one another, to connect, to share some thoughts about what uh, maybe you've uh, been listening to, uh, some questions, you get to talk with Melody and, and some, maybe some other staff and uh, just connect. So we'd encourage you to do so today. That would be wonderful. Uh, so as we're here uh, this morning, we're, we're recognizing that this coming week, uh, we celebrate Veterans Day. Uh, and we uh, understand that, I think unless you've served uh, in the military, it's hard for many of us to understand what the kind of sacrifice that that has entailed. So we want to uh, recognize and honor those who, who have served in all the branches of the military. So if you are a veteran or someone that you love, someone in your family or a friend is a veteran, please uh, signify that by writing their name and what branch they served in. Uh, so that we can recognize and honor them uh, this morning. So we really appreciate just uh, your presence here with us. We've been really trying out all different ways to connect and, and bring more connection. There's been lots and lots of people joining together at nine o'clock on a Sunday morning uh, to experience this together in real time uh, and to increase the connection that we have. Uh, one thing that is additional uh, that we've added recently is a chance for prayer. There's a live prayer option. Uh, for Sunday mornings now. We have some people from our prayer team standing by. So if you click the button uh, for prayer, you will be connected with someone uh, who can then pray with you. We have a great deal of intentionality about all the things that we are trying to do in New Song Church. And really they are stemming from, well, basically what Christ has called us to do as people of his kingdom. But we have kind of encapsulated that with our mission statement, which many of you are probably familiar with, but it always bears repeating uh, that we want to follow Jesus. We want to love people and we want to do good. And, and all around that, we want to be transformed by the Holy Spirit. Uh, and that is actually kind of in two ways. Uh, as we do these things, we find ourselves being transformed. And as we are transformed, we're better able uh, to really do the things that God's calling us to do. Uh, one of these things has been just the uh, continued growth of our pantry and our garden ministry. And we are really excited to uh, kind of expand uh, our people's knowledge uh, about what is going on there. So we have an event coming up on the 15th of November, uh, which we'd encourage you to register for. And it's called Come and See. Uh, I was reminded actually of a time when Jesus, in his early days of ministry, uh, one of his people came to their brother and said, hey, you must come and see, uh, we've found the Messiah. Uh, and so the brother comes and uh, he's a little skeptical at first, but then when he actually comes and meets Jesus, he is kind of uh, captivated by this, this man, Jesus, and becomes a follower of his. You know, we can actually hear about what's happening in the pantry. We can hear about what's happening at the garden, but there's something particularly powerful about actually coming and stepping into that space and seeing what Jesus has been doing in our midst uh, through these difficult times. Uh, so please come along. There'll be a chance to, to just observe and to hear some vision and to pray and to also uh, find ways to become involved. So we'd encourage you to register for that. You know, we believe that God is truly working in our midst. Uh, sometimes we don't see it right in the moment. Uh, the other day I was speaking with somebody and they were sharing how uh, the impact uh, of, of uh, uh, something that someone had done years prior was only now beginning to bear fruit in their lives. And I think that's helpful for us because sometimes in the moment we, we can minimize maybe um, 
the things that we're doing, the things that we're giving, the ways we're participating, because we're very much sometimes stuck in in seeing it just in that day or that time. And uh, sometimes we, we begin to doubt that what we're doing is really significant and making a difference. But in God's kingdom, uh, so much of it is actually going to bear fruit in the future as the pieces come together. So I would just encourage all, us all to continue to participate uh, in all the ways that we can, uh, be informed, uh, keep in touch, uh, ask questions. Uh, and I would encourage us all to continue to give uh, financially also. There are really exciting things happening that are very specific to New Song Church, and they do require us all to be participants. So if you are someone who feels part of this mission and you feel energy around this, then I would continue to, to continue to show up in all the ways that you can. Uh, because not just here in our local area, but around the world, we've been hearing from various co-workers around the world, and it's so exciting to hear from them. Uh, but we continue to support these people, and some of them are going through some hard times. Um, also, we really want to be strong in as far as resources, because we do believe that people are going to be having some needs in the future. Our pantry meets some food needs, but there's, there's going to be other ones. And we want to do these things in Jesus' name for God's glory. So thank you so much, uh, all who participate in this mission. Uh, your generosity is astounding and, and so uh, gratefully received, uh, you know, through our hands to our community in Jesus' name. So will you join at me for a moment of prayer as we continue in our time together? Father, Lord, we give you deep thanks for all that you are as you meet all that we are and we can feel in, in the light of all that you are sometimes so weak, so insignificant. Uh, but Lord, um, in that light, we actually discover truly uh, the gifts that you've given us that are truly part of who we are. Lord, help us to find our sense of joy, our sense of hope, our sense of a future in you alone. And Lord, call your people to participate rise up in us such a desire to know you and for you to be known uh, that we would be filled with faith, with confidence, that fear and anxiety would fly away uh, in the light of your goodness and love. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, New Song. This is Sam Metcalf. My wife, Patty, and I have been part of the missions family at New Song for the past 15 years or so. And today we give leadership to Novo, which is a mission agency headquartered here in Southern California with about 600 missionaries that work and minister in over 100 nations around the world. And where we have those missionaries, they seek to start and to multiply movements of the gospel. Now, 2020 has been, been a really rough year, as, as I'm sure it's been for you and your families. Uh, but at the same time, with the pandemic and the lockdowns and all of that, I can assure you that God's not on lockdown. And the reports that we get from all over the world are really kind of astounding. And some of the awesome things that God's doing and seeing literally thousands of people decide to become committed followers of Jesus. A verse that's been particularly meaningful during that time for me, or during this time for me, and I pray it's true for you guys too, is Philippians 1.12. In the midst of all of these difficulties and challenges and circumstances, Paul says this, I want you to know, my brothers and my sisters, that what has happened to me is really served to advance the gospel. 
So I pray that that's true for you as well. Despite all of these challenges, they've all served to advance the gospel. That brings us to the passage for this morning out of 1 Peter chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 18, 1 Peter 2, 18. And here's what Peter writes. Slaves, submit yourselves to your masters with all respect, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it's commendable if a man bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because he is conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and you endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, that is commendable before God. To this you are called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he didn't retaliate, but he suffered. He made no threats, and instead he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you've returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Amen. Good morning. My name is Melody, and I am one of the pastors here at New Song, and I am happy to be bringing you a little message this morning. Uh, how are you doing this week? Uh, how are you doing today? This week has felt long and heavy and weighty, and I don't know about you, but I've been going about my daily activities, and you know, while I'm doing these things, I've just felt this weighty presence in the air. Is, is that does that resonate with you at all? How how are you doing right now, honestly? Um, if I were at your front door right now, this morning, if I were to knock on your front door live and say, how are you doing? What would you tell me? What would you say? Not even regarding the politics of this week or anything like that, but what would you say if I was right in front of you? Would you say, I'm fine? I'm okay? I'm doing great? What would you say? Uh, would you list out maybe a list of, of physical pain that you're going through? Oh, my back hurts. Oh, my neck hurts. Oh, my shoulder. What, w would you list out a list of things that you're physically feeling? What would you tell me? What would you tell me if I was right in front of you today? What would you, what would you not tell me? What would you not tell me? I wonder if I was at your doorstep right now. Technically, I might be even uh, further into your house if I'm on your screen at home or if I'm coming through the speakers in your car. But if I were face to face to you, I would tell you, you know what? My body aches like crazy actually right now. Um, some of you may know I took a little fall last week. It felt more like a really big fall. I fell trying to on a hike. It was, anyway, it was bad, but I can barely lift my arm right now. I can barely lift my arm. My body hurts. Uh, and I would tell you this because it might be fairly obvious in person. Maybe it's fairly obvious through the screen, but I would tell you that because it's, it's obvious. It's on my mind. It's what I'm going through. Uh, have you taken a spill at uh, any point in your life? Do you have any home remedies that I can do? I'm all ears. What, what did you do to make yourself feel better? What I probably wouldn't tell you is that this week I also had a really bad case of food poisoning. I ate something that did not agree with my stomach, and I have not had much to eat this week other than broth and a little bit of tea because my stomach was on strike, and oh boy, what a week. Uh, have you had any food poisoning lately? What were your home remedies about that? What would you tell me? I wonder if you'd even tell me. We could spare each other the details for sure, but I, I wonder in sharing this information, in sharing this, these different types of information, there, there are things that we would share because maybe it's obvious or maybe we know that it happened, but what are some of the things we wouldn't share? What are some of the things we wouldn't talk about, the things that we're going through? Is it too personal? 
Is it too deep? Is it too embarrassing? Is it too weird? Is it too much information? TMI, as the saying goes? We're guarded. We're really guarded with what we share a lot of the time. And I wonder why that is. I wonder if we're fearful of being judged uh, or if we're fearful of being accepted if we shared or being seen differently. So right now, without fear, without fear of judgment, without, you know, maybe spare us some of the, some of the gory details, but how has this week been for you? Tell us about that. Tell us about, maybe tell me about the things that aren't physical in the sense of, you know, you took a fall or you ate something bad. What about your level of anxiety? What about, um, are you experiencing loneliness? Do you, are you fearing something right now? What about the things that are not caused by a bad fall or a bad meal? I could share with you this week that, that I have felt weak mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, I have felt strained this week. I feel like I've been failing on all sorts of levels. That's what's going on in my heart. I'm better now, but it was a rough few days, but that's, that's how I'm really, really doing. So I shared with you, I shared with you that I fell, I shared with you that I've never thrown up as much as I have, more than, this, than I have this week. I've shared with you weird, embarrassing, personal stuff. Will you share with us this morning? I'm going to pause for a second and let you share. Thank you for sharing. We're going we're gonna to get to the point of that in a second. Um, my next question for you is, where, where are we as a church right now? Where are we as a community of believers that says, Lord, I will follow your will. Lord, we trust you. Lord, guide us. Lord, lead us. Through it all, Lord, our eyes are on you. Through it all, we trust you. We know that you are in control. I have shared this with you before during this uh, pandemic season, but man, what a roller coaster of emotions this year continues to be. Maybe several years ago, I've talked about this with my family, maybe several years from now, there will be like a roller coaster ride that's themed the year 2020, kind of like the um, Universal Studios tour bus. You know, there's going to be a tour for what 2020 was. Uh, you'd start off the ride with not a care in the world, the music is singing, the birds are chirping, and you know, one section you get toilet papered, but the toilet paper quickly gets taken back. Uh, the next section you go through a dip and uh, you're going through like an earthquake simulation while you're being chased by murder, murder hornets. Uh, another section you get visually dizzy because there's all the computer screens around you with all the Zoom calls that you've been on. And the, the next dip you go through is a bunch of campaign signs that are being thrown at you, what seems like an endless hallway of days and days and days. You mark my words, when it happens, you can say, I heard it here first, here, new song by Melody Anderson. She predicted the 2020 theme ride. <laughs> but how are you doing in all of this? There's a term out right now, it's called COVID fatigue. COVID fatigue, and, and this is a sense of being exhausted uh, with dealing with this current circumstance that doesn't seem to change much. You guys know, again, that I like to ask you questions. So I'm going to ask you another question here. Where are you percentage-wise on your COVID fatigue? I'm going to pause in a second here for your answers. But before you answer, there, there's some rules here. Again, no judging. No judging someone else for their level, level of fatigue, uh, whether it's not there or whether it's fully fatigued. Um, there's no bragging rights, no gift card here for the person who has the most percentage or the least percentage. Um, I just want to know where you're at, honestly. Like I mentioned before, for myself, there's days where I am 100% fatigued. I want to drive to the next county to eat inside of a Chili's. I want to eat inside of a restaurant. I want to drop my kids off at school, regardless of if they're in session or not. I just want to drop them off and I'll pick you up at 2.30, kids. 
Uh, I'm, I, there's days where I'm done. There's days where I want to be completely isolated and not leave my house, where, you know, I'm, I'm just concerned about everything going on around me, and I just want to hunker down in my space. So where are you right now? Are you, are you just fine? You're 0% fatigued? Are you maybe, you know, feeling it a little? You're 10% fatigued? Are you 50-50? You're ready to go out, eat somewhere, do some things? Are you 100% fatigued? You're ready to go to a concert, go to the movies, hug everyone around you? What percentage of COVID fatigued are you? Let's answer that now. The reason I'm asking you these questions and the reason I want to know is because I want to know your personal account of things. I want to hear about your experience. I want to know what's going on in your life so that I can say, man, I am right there with you. Or so I can say, you know what, that stinks. Or I can say, you know what, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate that victory in your life. But I want to, I want to know what you're going through. Your happenings and my happenings are different, but they're happening all at the same time. You know, I want to be able to tell the next generation to come what 2020 was like for me, for my family, for my church family, for my community. I want to be able to tell them firsthand eyewitness accounts to what this year has been like. My son, my son has a book series called I Survived. And um, this, this book series, um, there's different books. There's, you know, I Survived the Titanic. I Survived a Certain Natural Disaster. I Survived a War. I Survived whatever it is. But it is um, firsthand accounts of what this event was. And so um, these are fascinating because they... They, you know, someone like my son has no idea what it's like to be going through something like that, something he's reading about. And so, you know, here we are getting through this time and we all have our first-hand accounts and we're all experiencing, we're all going through it. And that's what we're doing as we read First Peter together. These letters in the Bible are first-hand accounts. They're first-hand accounts of the first generation of believers that are going through it. They're going through it. They're trying to work out what it means to be a follower of Christ. Peter here was a human like you and I, and he walked this earth that you and I walk on with Jesus. He is giving us his first-hand account of what it was like to walk with Jesus, of what it was like to learn from Jesus. And now he is repeating what he experienced firsthand. His experience is good or bad. He is sharing with us. Now, sometimes when we read these passages, it's almost like getting someone else's mail. Can you resonate with that at all? You think, you get it in the mail and you think, and you look at it and you said, what, this letter doesn't apply to me. It must be meant for someone else. How does this experience benefit me at all. Just recently, my neighbor and I, we had our Amazon packages mixed up. And so I opened the Amazon package, not even checking the name because Amazon comes to my door quite frequently. And I open it and I quickly realized this is not my package. And I look and sure enough, there's my neighbor's name. And so, I, you know, I went to take over her package and I said, how, why did you order this? How do you use this thing? And, and she starts to tell me about this product and how it benefits her and what she uses it for. And um, before you know it, I want to try out the product and it is in my Amazon account for my next order. But I got to hear her firsthand experience. I got to learn what she uses this thing for. I got to hear about it. And because she shared a little bit of her life with me, it benefited me. I found community and camaraderie with her over this sharing of this experience of this, of this product. 
And here we are learning from these letters. And I pray, I pray that God will speak to us through these words. When, when we read these letters, when we read these firsthand accounts, we are to reflect on them, study them, apply them to our lives now. What did they learn going through it back then, 2,000 years ago, that we can apply to our lives here and now? We have to work to find the connection between Peter the Apostle and you and me here today. What good is it if we read these experiences and do nothing with it? That is not the idea here. The idea is to learn. The idea is to be open to God and how he might challenge us, how he might change us through reading these passages, through songs we hear that challenge us, through, through, through people that, that speak. Would we be open? Would we be open to change? Would we be challenged to press on? Would we be challenged to press on would we be open to what God might have to share with us? Open and honest about where we are in our lives also together. But my hope is that in sharing our firsthand experiences by the words you type in the chat or by the words you type in an email to a friend or to me or to Grant or to Josh or whoever, my hope is that we would find community, support, and fellowship. Will you pray with me as we hope to do that today? Lord Jesus, I just ask God that as we continue to go through this message today, God, would you give us the courage? Would you give us the heart? Would you give us the disposition to share our experiences or to listen to someone else's experiences, God? God, thank you that we are not alone in this world. You made us to be in a body of believers, God. We are not to go through it alone. Thank you for Peter's words this morning, God. As we look through them, would you help us apply it to our lives here and now? In Jesus' name I ask this. Amen. So this book that we have been looking at, First Peter, this book focuses on the fact that this world is indeed not our home. This book is, this, this world is not our home. Peter says that in this world, we will endure suffering. Suffering is real. Trials are real. Persecution on this earth is real. But Jesus is real too. Jesus is real. Peter said earlier in the, in the book, chapter one, verse six, he says, in this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes through it is tested by fire, may be found, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, Peter is not writing this from a place of comfort. Peter is writing this as someone who is experiencing this suffering, these trials, this persecution. He is experiencing these things alongside his people. He's experiencing these things firsthand. And he is trying to encourage people 2,000 years ago and 2,000 years later, encouraging you and me. Our scripture today specifically speaks about suffering, and there's a lot of different types of suffering. In his book, Timothy Keller, in the book Walking Through God Through Pain and Suffering, Timothy Keller says that there are several different varieties of suffering. Suffering we bring on ourselves, suffering of betrayal, suffering of loss, the suffering of mystery, and suffering in this sense, this this passage, this passage specifically would read that Peter is referring to a social hierarchy that no one seems to have the power to change. And while a quick read may seem to point us in that direction, let me ask you, let me ask you this question. How does this passage speak to you, to your account of life? How does it speak to you? When you read this with me today, what thoughts immediately come to mind? What words stand out to you? In our teaching team, Grant, Josh, and myself, we meet weekly with the passage for the week. We meet weekly and we talk about how it hits us first, personally. 
We share, we just share from our hearts. We don't try to demonstrate the knowledge we have behind the passage. We don't try to prove how, how many commentaries we've read or the latest philosophers' theological thoughts. No, we share from our heart and we share how it hits us well, in context to what we may be walking through at the moment. Now, Sam Metcalf here read the passage this morning that was so great to hear, but I'm going to read um, the version that is from the message right now. So take a listen, and I'm going to ask you a question in a second. So let's read the passage, um, the message version. You who are servants, be good servants to your masters, not just to good masters, but also to bad ones. What counts is that you put up with it for God's sake when you're treated badly for no reason. There's no particular virtue in accepting punishment that you well deserve. But if you're treated badly for good behavior and continue in spite of it to be a good servant, that is what counts with God. This is the kind of life you've been invited into, the kind of life Christ lived. He suffered everything that came his way so that you would know that it could be done and also know how to do it step by step. He never did one thing wrong, not once said anything amiss. They called him every name in the book and he said nothing back. He suffered in silence, content to let God set things right. He used his servant body to carry out our sins to the cross so that we could be rid of sin, free to live the right way. His wounds became your healing. You were lost sheep with no idea who you were or where you were going. Now you're named and kept for good by the shepherd of your souls. So I'm going to ask you now, we're going to keep the passage up on the screen, and I'm going to ask you, how does, that, how does this passage hit you? Is there a word that stands out to you? Is there a phrase? What do you think about when you read this? I'm going to pause, and you can go ahead and answer. I'll get back to why I'm asking you about this in a moment. This message is titled Suffering as the Messiah Did. And let's talk a little bit more about suffering. As I mentioned, Grant, Josh, and I meet every week and speak about the, the passage, the scripture. And in our meeting with Grant and Josh, I shared that the first thought that came to my mind, the first lens I read this through was through the lens of a personal relationship. I have someone in my life, not my husband, just to be clear, um, but I have someone in my life who can be very cruel for no rhyme or reason. They are just unhappy and therefore they give grief to those around them and myself included in that sometimes. There are times that we suffer at the hands of others unjustly. No rhyme or reason. It's very unjust. We can do everything right and we still get treated poorly. Suffering unjustly can happen in all sorts of situations. Unjust, thing, unjust things happen all the time. Peter here, he's aware. He is aware of the brutality that exists, the terrible things happening around him. And Peter knows that this new generation of believers, these people going through these situations at this time, he knows that they're looking to him for the how-to guidelines on, on how to get through their situation. They're saying, hey, we're followers of Christ. We saw him. We saw him being crucified. We saw him being risen from the dead. We saw all that. We have a new faith, and now comes the glory, right? Now comes the easy part, right? Well, not exactly. Not exactly. Peter here, he is not super optimistic about the world changing its social structures, in the world changing its treatments of people. But Peter here in this passage is talking to us about our response 
our response when we experience these things. Peter here is giving out practical advice. He is giving out a how to function in the world around them, how to endure what is happening. He is saying, be in it. Endure it. Go through it. Wait, what? Wait, what? Isn't this the glory part? We have faith. We, have, we believe. Isn't this? Wait, 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 wait. You're saying submit yourselves? You were called for this? That's what you're saying to us, Peter? That's why we want to take these passages in the Bible and just slam the Bible shut, as I've said before, and pretend we didn't read that. Pretend we didn't read submit yourselves, for you were called to this. We want to shut the Bible. Wouldn't suffering just be taken away because I'm a follower of Christ? Wouldn't I be spared that? Wouldn't living in this world be easier because I have faith? No, no. But Peter is saying he thinks God can use your suffering. God can use it. I believe that suffering can produce change that God can use. I also know that God gives us zero explanation of suffering. Zero explanation. So how do we do it? How do we get through it? Again, Peter will, will tell you exactly. He'll point you to Jesus. In verse 21, he says, For you were called to this because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. Again, we're hearing this from an eyewitness to the very crucifixion. He saw Christ suffer firsthand, and he is letting you know that he received the charge from the Messiah, that you and I have received the same charge. In Matthew 5, verse 43, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. This is Jesus speaking. But I tell you, Jesus tells you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Jesus also said, brother will rise against brother. People will hate you because of me. He also said this in Matthew 5, you are blessed when they insult you. You are blessed when they insult you and persecute you and falsely say every kind of evil against you because of me. These are Jesus' words. He says, be glad and rejoice because your reward is great in heaven. Jesus did not make any promise of an easy life. In fact, he is telling you how to get through the hard stuff. Peter is confirming what we said earlier. Peter says, you know what? There is much to be learned in this situation. Endure it. Go through it. Go through it with the right perspective. Go through it as Jesus did. You have the example here, step by step. But our natural reaction to suffering is, no, no, make it stop, right? Physical pain, right? My arm hurts. Ah, I want to mask it with some pain relief. We don't want to go through it, especially, especially when it is undeserved, unfair. We don't wake up in the morning thinking, I wonder how I will suffer today. We don't wake up in the morning hoping for that. We wake up in the morning, we're hoping for ease, we're hoping for comfort, we're hoping for joy. And yes, there are those days, but that is not every season. It is not. Not every situation is like that. And Peter's call here is to endure it when these seasons are long, when these seasons are of suffering, when these seasons have zero explanation to them. It's easy to keep a good attitude when, when things are going smoothly. And it's challenging, almost impossible to have a positive outlook when you're not being treated fairly. When you're even trying your best, but you continue to be treated poorly. Look here again. Peter points us to Jesus. He says he suffered everything that came his way so that you would know that it could be done and also know how to do it step by step. God called us to a life of endurance. Look at some of the examples we have here in the Bible. Joseph is a prime example of someone who was treated unjustly. He did nothing wrong. 
He did nothing wrong, yet he was sold into slavery by his brothers, thrown into prison, treated harshly for over 10 years before his circumstances changed. Yet Joseph was faithful. How about Daniel? Daniel is another example of someone who was treated unjustly for doing something good. Daniel was an advisor in the king's court, and, and because some corrupt men were jealous of Daniel and his position, they manipulated the king to passing judgment on Daniel simply for praying, for praying. So they threw him in the lion's den. These people did nothing wrong, yet they had to endure much. Even when the situation is awful, he calls us to go through it, to endure it. He gave us an example to follow. He said Jesus didn't return insult, not once said anything amiss. Again, the message version says, they called him every name in the book and he said nothing back. He suffered in silence, content to let God set things right, content to let God set things right. I can share with you story after story of people asking me, Melody, why am I going through this? Melody, why is God making me go through this? And there's been situations where I don't even know how to respond. I don't. But I do know that Christianity was born through suffering. Christianity was born in and through suffering. From the time Mary gave birth to him to his crucifixion on the cross, there was suffering. So are you enduring some suffering today? What are you enduring? What are you going through? Do you have any sort of person in your life that treats you poorly, that treats you unfairly, that treats you badly no matter what you do, no matter how hard you try? Do you just, do you just, you can't wait for the day that you can tell them off? Do you have someone in your life that, that you love, that you love and treats you so badly, unjustly? What about what I asked earlier? What about our dislike for 2020, right? Peter is saying, submit to what is happening around you. Experience it in its fullness with the right perspective, with the right attitude. Well, Peter, that is fantastic. But you know what? I've had enough of 2020, right? That's what we would say. Peter would probably say back to you and me, I know, but submit yourselves to the Lord who is in control. Submit yourself to the Lord who is in control. What might the Lord have for you in this experience in 2020? We're so busy trying to ask God to change our lives and we're waiting for circumstances, terrible circumstances sometimes to change, but God is saying, I can use you now. Endure it. Be obedient. Be a good witness for me. Endure it. We should seek to serve the Lord with the right attitude, the right perspective, regardless of the situation. My question to you is, will you do as, as, as God asks you to? Will you endure? Will you remain silent when you are insulted, when you are treated unfairly, when you face unjust treatment? Will you be content to let God set things right. Will you listen to Peter's words here and be okay with it? You know, we sing the song. We sing the song, it is well. It is well with my soul. You have taught me to say it is well. But is it well? Is it well with your soul? Do you have confidence in that? Are you content in your soul to let God sort things out? It can be. It, it maybe doesn't feel like it, but it can be. Christ endured it all so that we can look to him while we are going through it. Our eyes are to follow him step by step 
while we are going through it. Our eyes are to remain fixed on him and his example. If you were to ask me today, Melody, how do I deal with unjust things in life as I look at this passage? If you were to ask me that today, I'd, I'd remind you of three things, three things, and I'd tell you to do one thing. The three things I'd remind you of is this. Number one, I'd remind you of who Jesus is. Verse 20, he did not commit sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. He was perfect, yet he suffered unjustly. The second thing I'd remind you of is what Jesus did. Verse 23, when he was insulted, he did not insult in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but entrusted to the one who judges justly. He did not take matters into his own hands. And three, the last thing I'd remind you of is what Jesus did. Verse 25, for we were, for you were like sheep going astray, but you have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. He is with us when we are going through it. He was perfect, yet he suffered. He did not take matters into his own hands. He is with us while we are going through it. And the thing I'd tell you to do, the thing I'd suggest that you do after you are reminded of these things, is share your firsthand account with us. Share your story, share your experience with others. Your experience may give a voice, may give affirmation to those who are suffering in the same way. You might find camaraderie, you might find community, you might find support, like I found with my neighbor with her product. You might find that, but you have to be willing to share your firsthand experience. Your courage might give others the courage to share their frustration, their fears, their hurts. Your vulnerability might give evidence that someone needs to hear on how God has shown up for you. You may bring hope, comfort in the hardship. We desperately need each other, not just in the triumphs, but in the dark days. That's when we need each other the most. We are the body of Christ, and we were also called to endure these things together. We are called to share in one another's sufferings. We sing this song, it is well together, even when it isn't. Because when I can't walk, you carry me. When you can't walk, I will carry you. That is the call. Our stories matter. Our hurts matter. Our suffering matters. But what we believe and how we get through it matters more. It matters more. I'm going to ask you to listen to a song for a brief moment. For a brief moment and come back. And I'm going to ask you to reflect on your story, your firsthand account of what is happening in your life right now. Is it well with your soul? Is it well with your soul? Are you content to let God take care of things? Are you content to be silent? Or are there situations, people, you need to lift up in prayer so that you can endure you can go through it. Let's reflect on this song for a moment. When peace like a river attendeth my way When sorrows like sea billows roll
So what did you feel when you heard that song? What were your reflections? Was it confidence in the truth? You know it as well. You know it as well. Are you feeling the weight of life right now? Wanting it to be well? Are you willing to share your story? Encourage others by your words, by your experience? Maybe, maybe you don't want to share your story, but maybe you want to hear others' story. Maybe just your presence there will encourage someone else to speak. Maybe just your presence. We have so many ways for you to connect. We have so many ways. Sign up for a pastoral care call. Join a small group. We have in-person ones and online ones. We're together. I would also say serve. Serve. Get out of your head. Get out of your space. Serve somewhere. Focus on something else for a while. Don't hesitate to access these resources that are here for you and me. Don't hesitate. When I take a pastoral call, it blesses me probably more than it blesses the person on the other line. And, you know, when we click the lobby link right after the message, when we click that link, it warms my heart to see these faces. It warms my heart to see how people are doing this week. I've said it before to lots of people. I don't need you to show up. I don't need you because we're trying to reach a certain goal. We're trying to get a certain number. I don't need that. I want you there. I want you there for me. I want you there for me. And I want you there for you. I want you there. I want you to show up. I want to endure it with you. I want you to endure it with me. I want you to be seen, to be heard, to be loved. Let's go through it together. Let's endure together. Thank you so much to Melody for bringing the word to us today. Uh, we sincerely hope that uh, what you heard today has caused you to, to think and to feel. Uh, and, and truly, we believe that, that God is one who speaks, that he is always speaking. And he particularly speaks through the proclamation of the word, when what we call preaching, when someone brings a message. I know Melody has prayed all week uh, that God would reveal through her what it is he wants to tell us. And that's so unique and so individual to each one of us. I know we all hear differently, but we believe the Holy Spirit uh, brings us just what we need. But it also uh, should elicit a response. So we hope that you have questions. We hope that you you have um, maybe some things that are attention for you, you might need to discuss with people. That's why we're having the lobby, part, part of the reason for that. So please join us. I would I encourage you to do so. I strongly encourage you, urge you to do so. I know all who have participated in that time have found it to be nourishing and helpful. And, and typically we've all left with smiles on our faces uh, because we get a chance to talk and to connect. That's really what we want to do. Um, so please join us in the lobby and, and have a conversation and some time for prayer. Also, uh, if you need just to connect with somebody, we have what we're calling pastoral care. And really pastoral care is simply just a friend for the journey. It's really um, inviting God into a conversation. And one of our pastors will call you. Uh, you can have a conversation, just share how things are going for you currently. Uh, we can share resources with you if that's something that you need right now. And then simply we go to God together and bring the needs of the day to him. So sign up for that, register for a slot there. If you have prayer needs, please utilize our online prayer wall. It's a fantastic and growing ministry. Many, many people now have been connecting with that and posting their things. And many, many people are getting to the habit of checking it regularly and praying for the needs of our community and our world. So I'd encourage you uh, to connect with that. And talking of prayer, every Wednesday, Sonia and the prayer team will be leading us uh, in a time of prayer, seven o'clock Wednesdays. Uh, register for that to receive the link and join with your community in doing this thing that we've said is a real goal for us this year. Again, we want to become a community of prayer. We want to surround everything that we do uh, with the sense of an intention of crying out to God, asking him to shape us, change us and use us for his kingdom, good work in our communities. Thank you so much for being here with us again and look forward to connecting again next week uh, if you have any questions please connect with us uh, through the office uh, and we will make sure that we uh, address the concerns of your days 
Uh, God is good. We, we really truly believe that no matter what situation we find ourselves in, and there are many, many, many things to be concerned about in our world today, we believe that God is faithful. And actually, these are the days when the church should be shining most brightly. Uh, if we will hold together, if we will uh, act justly, if we will love mercy, and if we will walk humbly with God. And that's what all this is designed to do for us, that we together will learn more about Jesus and be transformed by that knowledge uh, to actually live different kinds of lives in our community. Uh, God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Uh, take care. Be safe. We'll see you soon.